Hello everyone, I'm Paul, and today we're going to talk about the more advanced features of ClassIn. So if you haven't watched our first video on the basic features, what are you doing? Stop this video, go and watch that one. After you've watched it, come back and watch this, and we're going to talk about the more advanced features of ClassIn. All right, as you can see, I am already in my classroom here. So let's go ahead and talk about some of these more advanced features. Um, the first one is taking notes. And if you look here below all of our basic features, the first one is taking notes. So I can click on that and this little window pops up. I have no notes yet, but I want to add one. Now, when I do, it will take a screenshot of what is on the blackboard right now. And I can enter some text. Maybe I say, this is my first note. All right. Now that note will stay here. Maybe I scroll down to the next page. I want to take another note. This is my second note. All right. And those will stay there. So as you have class, you can keep taking more and more notes. Uh, and when you leave class, you can, you can go ahead and click on those and they will get larger. And there's a button here and save. And you can save that somewhere on your computer and you'll have that note and you will remember whatever you are studying. So that's uh, our first feature there, taking notes. Very simple to use. And if you want to get rid of it, you can just click this little delete button. Maybe you took a note by accident. Yeah, just get rid of those. And we have no notes again. So that's the first feature, taking notes. For the second feature, I'm going to ask Emma and Seven, you'll remember them from our other video, to help me out. Uh, it's the little chat box. You see here there's a little speech bubble with the dot, 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 the ellipsis there. So in here you can see the students can chat. Now this might be useful if you have a very large class or a seminar and you cannot fit everybody's face on the stage. So maybe they still need to communicate. They can use this chat box. So um, how about Seven? Can you write hello for me in this chat box? OK. All right. So you can see she can chat, and I can add something too. Hi, Seven. Hello, I can add a little smiley face, an emoji. Uh, you can also send uh, screenshots if you want in the chat, both of the uh, was well, something on the blackboard or you can uh, hide your thing again and take a screenshot of something on your desktop uh, and send that as well. And when those are in the chat, all you have to do is hit click on it and it will become large and you can see that screenshot even clearer. Now, Emma, I want you to help me use the second tab here, question. Emma, can you write a question for me? Okay. Okay, so Emma's questions popped up here. What do you like to eat? So maybe you have a very, very large class and you cannot see everyone on the top uh, and someone wants to ask a question. They can use this feature and you just click this answer button. You, you check it out. You see, you think it's a good question. It will pop up. Now everyone can see this. What do you like to eat? And as the students can now read this question or statement um, and you can comment on it. And uh, so right now, once it's popped out like this, Emma and Seven can both see this. Any other students in the classroom can see it. So it's an easy way for students to ask questions in a very large classroom where you can't just see them or they, uh, there's too many people to be raising their hands all the time. Now, uh, you'll see this little button here is silence. If you have a very small class and you don't want students using the chat room because it's distracting, you can click that. Now, Emma and Seven cannot use it at all. They can't send messages to each other. Um, so maybe if you have two students trying to chat during class, you can silence that. There is one other button here I will show you. If my screen is not completely uh, taking up the whole screen, it's not maximized, I can click this button. Now I can actually drag this outside. It's popped out. All right, and if I click it again, it'll pop back in. So that's what that last button does. So uh, that's all for the chatting feature. Let's go ahead and talk about the cloud. Now, the cloud is uh, this next button here. It looks like a cloud. You'll click on that, and you'll see some tabs up here. This first tab, Authorize Resources, uh, whatever institution has the license to use class in can upload things here, uh, and any of their teachers can access these files. 
Um, so maybe if you're teaching home wonders for say, uh, this this is from a school and they're teaching wonders, so I can go to G2 and I can look through and find whatever materials I need. But each teacher also has a uh, and student also has a personal cloud, my cloud disk. Here are the things that I personally uploaded. For example, maybe I want to teach about uh, what's the difference between a city and the country. I can go ahead and open these two files, click on this, and say this picture here is the city, this is the country. So it's very easy to have uh, whatever you need just ready, already uploaded onto the cloud. You can just click it and it'll pop right in. Um, so that's the my cloud disk. Uh, you'll also have uh, the library tab here, and uh, this is uh, also can also be um, have other things uploaded to it as well. Uh, if you maybe you forgot to uh, to upload something uh, and you're in class already, there's there's a way to to get it into uh, class in, um, <clears throat> and that's here. You'll come down here, and you have a picture here. You can click on this picture as well and uh, you can find wherever it is saved on your computer. All right, let's try to upload something here. So I can click on this button, uh, pick something, maybe here's a PPT. All right, you'll see here it shows up, this little um, circle here is showing that it's currently uploading. And then if I go back in here and I reload it, uh, eventually, when it's finished uploading, it will show up right here, and I can open it there. So that's how the cloud works. All right, let's go on to the next part. This is the teaching tools. All right, the first one, this is in this little toolbox here. I want to show you these first three. Uh, this one here, we showed you before. You can open uh, files, uh, pictures, images. Uh, if you can find some <coughs> pictures somewhere. You can open those. Maybe we go to my uh, downloads here. There's a picture. All right, so I can click on that, and it will load right into Class In. So that's how you can insert pictures. Maybe if you forgot to put something on the cloud. The second one, you can actually open uh, EDB files. Uh, and we're not going to do that now because it will erase everything. Here it says you want to clear all existing content. So we're not going to use that for now, but uh, if you have an EDB file prepared you can, on your computer and not on the cloud, you can open it this way. And the last one uh, here is to save. If you want to save everything that you've done on the Blackboard, you can click that and it will save exactly how everything is. All right, so that's saving and loading. Let's go to the next one, the more interactive tools. These are things you use when you're actually teaching. Uh, the first one I want to show you here is the timer. Now this will pop up here. I can move it around wherever I want. I can set how many minutes or seconds I want. I just hit start, and it will count down. And when it gets to the end, it's brrrr. All right, so if you want to have some kind of timed activity, uh, you have 10 minutes to do this writing or five minutes to solve these problems, you can use this timer to make sure your students are on track. All right, that's the timing tool. Next one, we have a dice or a die. If you want to roll that for some kind of activity, or uh, uh, maybe you say on, on a number four, you have to do this. On a number three, you have to do this. Yeah. Or just to see uh, who goes first. Uh, Emma and Seven can roll to see who can go first. Uh, in addition to that, we have a small blackboard. Now, this is a very interesting one. Uh, when I hand this out, uh, now Emma and Seven can see on their screens they have a small blackboard. Okay, whatever they draw, whatever I'm drawing right now, they cannot see. But uh, Emma and Seven, can you draw something on your small blackboard? Okay. 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 So I can go on this little tab here. Student one is Emma. She's drawing a flower, it looks like. Student three is Seven. Seven, are you drawing something? Drawing. <laughs> Anything? Anything is okay. All right, so you can click in the menu of all the names of your students will pop down, or you can hit the over button and go from Blackboard to Blackboard. 
All right. When you're done, just hit the collect. Doop. Now everyone can see this. So Paul didn't. I didn't draw anything. But Emma drew two nice flowers. Well, one and a half. <laughs> and seven drew a sun. Okay, so now everyone can see it. If I want to hand it out again, now they can draw once more on their blackboard. Okay? So I'll collect that. When I close, I have the option to save it. If someone's writing something and you want to keep it, just hit save. And it will go to a folder where you can save it. Or if I don't want it, I can just hit no. And it will be gone into the ether. All right. So that is the small private blackboard. This next tool I want to share with you is uh, called the responder tool. And this is just to see, to make class a little more interactive. Uh, if I ask a question, I can click on this tool and little bubbles will pop up. This here, it says start. So uh, Emma and Seven, I want you to click the little bubble to see who is fastest, okay? So on your screen, you will see a little bubble. So I'll click that. Now this will actually move around the screen. Doom, doom, doom. And they have to click it. All right. So uh, it looks like seven was fast. Student three. So now I can say ask seven a question or something. Okay. That's uh, just uh, to make class maybe a little more interactive. Uh, it's like raising your hand. It's a, fair, a somewhat fair way to see uh, who goes first. And you can hit restart to do that again. All right. This next one here is called the answering device. And for this, I need a question. So I have a question prepared. I'm going to drag that out here. Uh, there are four answers, A, B, C, D. So I'll leave A, B, C, D. If you have only three, you can do minus. Or if you have more, oop, you can add more. Okay, but for now, we have four. Um, <clears throat> since this question has no correct answer, I'm just going to highlight them all. If there is a correct answer, you can choose the correct answer. Now I click Start to answer. Um, so, Emma and Seven, I want you to answer, which ice cream flavor do you like best? Someone clicked C, which is strawberry. Now, I can click on details to see who did what. All right, student three said C. Um, student one said B. So, Emma said B. Emma likes chocolate. And uh, Seven likes strawberry, okay? So, I can check to see how my students are doing and monitor if they're understanding whatever... Um, material we're learning and when I hit stop answering everyone can see how many people chose which answer so you can use this to test for understanding or for polling to see what students opinions on things are um, so that's what this tool is all right let's go ahead and get rid of this question we don't need that anymore all right <clears throat> so our next tools that we're going to talk about is for coding now, uh, a lot of people are teaching STEM classes these days, and uh, online is a good way to do that. Coding is very popular. Um, there are two options uh, in, built into class in that you can use to practice coding. And I don't know anything about coding, so <laughs> I don't know how to, uh, much about this. But if you know which language you want to use, if you're using uh, Python or Java or C++ or JavaScript, you can choose whichever language. And then in here, you can type whatever um, uh, lines uh, that you want to show and uh, this is collaborative so if I type something I can give authority to Emma and Emma can type something in here too okay Emma do you know how to code no no <laughs> she knows at least one proper command line which is good <laughs> So she knows some stuff, right? Okay, so that is uh, how you can kind of collaborate together on coding. Now, if you want students to do that individually, once again, we have here the small blackboard. I can do a text one, which is just like that collaborative one, except for now the students have their individual boards that they can practice their lines of coding on. All right, so that is coding. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click that, get rid of it, um, but also you can go through each student on that one and see how they're doing. All right, we're almost done here. Let's go to the one of the la last features, screen sharing. Now, there are two ways to do this. The first one here is desktop sharing. Um, 
this is what you want to use if you have uh, something with audio, like a video you want to share. Um, also, if some of your students are on mobile devices, if they're on the phone or the I, uh, iPad or the you know whatever tablet um, they're using, this is the only option they can use. So there's a there's a screen limit to it. If I drag it this much, this is as large and uh, as tall and wide as it can get. I can hit start sharing, and now um, whatever I bring in here the students in the classroom can also see. Okay, so uh, this is what you want to use, this desktop sharing. If you are, uh, as I said, doing something with sound, I can turn it on, turn it off here, or you're using the desktop sharing for students with mobile devices. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that here. There is one other screen sharing option called the uh, X, um, X-Wave screen sharing. Click on that. Now here you see two options. If I do the teacher option, I can show my whole screen, and both my students can see this, uh, whatever it is. And they can also, I can also interact with this. I can draw things on it. Uh, I can move whatever I've drawn on it. I can, uh, I can type, just like before. You know, do whatever on while you're sharing your screen. I can hit this button to clear it, clear everything out. Uh, I can also use click if I want to interact with something, if I want to like open that folder again and show someone something. All right, so that's the teacher option. This last button here just pops the menu down to the, uh, the toolbar down to the top or bottom. All right, so let's cancel that. I want to show you the next option, which is very interesting, all students. All right, so now every student can share their board, and I can go through uh, on tabs and check those out. Move me down here. Move us down here. All right. So uh, right now we're looking at student three. So this is seven's board. I can go and see Emma's board too. So let's say Emma's opening a PowerPoint for me. This is our PowerPoint from our first video. Uh, and I can actually hit on the click button here. And even though this is uh, Emma's desktop, I can interact with it. I can click on Let's look at the mountains now. Let's look at the flowers now. All right. Let's let's um, make this full screen. Okay. I can interact with her uh, desktop, whatever she's sharing with me, <clears throat> when I use this X-Way feature. Okay. And as before, you can draw on it just like in the other one. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Uh, so that is how you can screen share. Now that. Second, the X-Way uh, version can take up the whole screen, but it will not work on mobile devices, um, iPhones, Android, um, or uh, any tablets. Um, and it will be the frame rate will be much slower um, because it doesn't <clears throat> um, because it's en enabling uh, the teacher to interact with their Blackboard. Uh, they had to cut that down just for until the internet bandwidth can be high enough to support it. So that will be much slower than the other desktop sharing. So if you want to share a video and you have mo students with mobile devices, use this desktop sharing. For the next one, if you want to interact with what they're doing, maybe they're doing some coding activities or some kind of STEM uh, activity and you need to show them where their mistake is or interact with their board, that is your, the tool you'll want to use. So real quick, we're almost done. I want to uh, show an example activity of how you can use several of these tools at the same time. So let me open up my die, put that here. Let me open up my timer and put that right here. We'll take this down to one minute. And then I'm going to give out a private blackboard here. So. Uh, you'll notice all these tools can be opened and closed in different combinations, and they can run simultaneously. So the way this activity works, I'm going to roll the die to determine a category. And then Emma and uh, Seven will write as many words as they can that belong to that category. So let's see. I'll just click on this die to roll it. Six. Things at school. Okay. So I hand that out. Emma and uh, Seven, think about as many things at school as you can and try to write them down. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'll go ahead and hit start here. So you have one minute. So if you 
prepare some kind of activity like this. You can monitor your kids as they're writing. Um, see, Seven's already got a couple answers of things at school. Okay, so uh, this is just a, a small example of a, an activity that you could do using several tools at once, and you can use these in any combination. Um, so just you can get creative with it. And I think that's about all of the tools, you, the basic tools you need um, and the advanced tools you need to teach class. So we have 15 seconds. Let's see how many they come up with. How's it going? How are my students doing? Uh-oh, not great. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Time's up, time's up. I can collect that. So then I can go through and it looks like Emma has two students and books. Um, and wow, seven has one, two, three, four, five. I like boys and girls. It's a good, it's a good choice. So these are some things or people at school. Um, and you'll notice also, I forgot to mention this, uh, as, the, as the students or... Um, uh, or people you're training are writing, you can also write in their class, uh, in their small blackboard to help them. If uh, maybe they have like, oh, what's going wrong? What's going on here? Um, you can point that out to them as they're writing. Um, so that's another thing you can do with the small blackboards. So I'm not going to save that. We're almost done. The last thing I want to show you is uh, you'll see down here, there's a this button that looks like a group of people. This is called the roster. Now, if you have a large class and it cannot all fit in that top um, stage, you can see a full list here of all your students going all the way down. If you want to give someone authority who's not on stage, you can click on this. So you can see now seven has authority. I can click here also and take it away. I can also mute students here, or I can take them off the stage, put them back on the stage. Okay, so I can do all of that from this roster. Now, this is what you want to do if you have a huge class and you want to cycle through people um, on your stage. And if you if you can't be bothered to do that because you're busy lecturing or teaching something, uh, you can click this button that will shift them uh, in sequence. They will come on and off the stage every however long you choose, every 30 seconds. Um, you can set this time as well. Uh, so that is what you can do if you have a lot of kids. Maybe you have 100, you know, 200. You can have them cycle through onto the top so everyone gets a little time on stage. Or you can manually select who's on stage and who isn't by clicking on this button, stage. Uh, and finally, you can also kick people out of class with this remove, uh, which you don't want to do unless there's a big problem. So that is the roster feature. And I think we almost talked about everything. Uh, there is this little thing here, down here. Um, Emma and uh, Seven, can you raise your hand here? Yeah, if you do that, you'll click that. You'll see the little yellow hand shows up on their camera feed. And I can actually click here and see who is uh, raising their hand. Okay. So uh, that's another way if someone has a question in a big class and you don't know who is asking the question, you'll see their little name there, who is asking uh, a question. All right, that's it for the advanced tools in class N. Uh, the very last thing I'm going to show you, well, let's go ahead and say bye-bye to Seven and Emma first. Bye-bye, Seven. Bye-bye, Emma. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. All right, we'll say bye-bye to them. I'm going to leave the classroom, and uh, now you will see that uh, I have some names of my students here. I can actually uh, give them some feedback. Oh, you did a you did a great. They did five stars this class, and say why uh, you were amazing. Okay, you can type in some kind of comment, and uh, here you can just give a little feedback to your students after every class, and go ahead, okay, and that will send to them on the computer. They can access that. So that's all for our advanced tools today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you online. Well, that is all for now. If you still have questions, just ask those in the comment section below. Or if you have any ideas for future how-to videos that you would like to see, leave those in the comment section as well. We will continue to release new videos about every week, so hit that subscribe button 
to be sure that you don't miss any of those new releases. Our next video will be about how to upload those precious teaching materials that you spent so long on up onto the cloud so that they will always be right at your fingertips. So be sure to check that out as well. Thanks for watching and may all of your moments be teachable ones. See you online.